Amen. Would you pray with me, please? Be with us this morning, God. Quiet our hearts. May our spirits be still, that we might hear from you. Amen. On June 6, 1944, the climax of World War II, the Allied forces stormed the beaches of Normandy, establishing a beachhead in France from which it was from that moment forward. Inevitable that the German campaign was over and that the Allied forces would be victorious. We call this famous day D-Day. And nearly 80 years later, we still remember with all the bravery of the young men who took to the beach that day. What we sometimes fail to remember all these years later, however, is that the war did not officially end with D-Day. That while both the Allied forces and the German military both knew after that point that the war was effectively over, the Germans nonetheless kept fighting, eventually mounting the infamous Battle of the Bulge, one of the most brutal and horrific battles of the entire war. This even though they knew that the cause was lost. Well, finally, on May 8, 1945, a day we now remember as V-Day, that which was inevitable was finally fully realized. The war that was already effectively over was now officially over. Thus, nearly an entire year elapsed between the time when both sides knew that the war was essentially over and the day when victory was finally announced for all the world to see and hear. There was D-Day and there was V-Day and then there was the time in between, a time of tumult and hardship and significant suffering even though the war was really already over. And so is now the time when you will restore the kingdom? The disciples asked Jesus in Acts chapter 1. This just moments before Jesus will withdraw from them into heaven. Is now the time when all of this stuff will finally be over? They ask, and your kingdom will finally come. Is now the time? It's a fair question for them to ask. For these disciples were rightly curious and confused about what in the world was going on at this point. For clearly, through the fact of His resurrection, God was vindicating all that Jesus had said about God's coming kingdom. And clearly, as He walked among them once more in this strange, glorified body, clearly He was representing something all new in lived history. Clearly, the old age was now ending and the promised new age had begun. Clearly. I mean, just look at him there. Risen from the dead and in this glorified body, clearly something new had happened. Clearly, it was all over. But clear as this no doubt was, still... Outside of Jesus and His uncanny reappearance among them, everything else still looked the same. The same Roman government was still running things in Palestine. The same corrupt chief priests were still running things within the temple system. The same folks mired in poverty remained mired in poverty, and the same folks hungry and thirsty, well, they went on as hungry and thirsty as ever before. So clearly a victory had been won here, yes. But just as clearly with that victory 
Nothing seemed to have changed. Suffering and hardship and tumult and injustice went on unabated. And thus, it was an altogether confusing and disorienting and dispiriting time for these disciples. And so quite naturally, they ask, is now the time when you will restore the kingdom? So here's a phrase I want us to hold on to. Already, but not yet. Already, but not yet. It's a phrase that theologians use to describe the interim period in which we currently live as Christians. This period between the resurrection of Jesus and the coming of God's kingdom in its fullness. This period between the end of the old age and the consummation of the new. Already, but not yet. Victory won, but not yet fully realized. Yes, the whole creation is groaning, the Apostle Paul writes describing this tension we all feel between the already and the not yet. The whole creation is groaning, he writes, and not only the creation, but we ourselves, we who have the first fruits of the Spirit, we also groan while we wait, he writes. In the interim, he says, in this time between the already and the not yet, we, he says, groan. The D-Day, V-Day metaphor for this already not yet theology is not my own. It was first put forward by 20th century theologian Oscar Coleman. And not only is it a particularly helpful one, conceptually speaking, it's also a particularly apt one for this weekend, seeing as tomorrow is Memorial Day. A day when we remember with gratitude those brave men and women who've given their lives in service of protecting us. But apt though the timing may be, I don't use this metaphor today because of Memorial Day. Rather, I use it because of what today is according to the church calendar. For today is Ascension Sunday. The day when Christian churches all around the world reflect on and celebrate and give thanks for Jesus Christ's ascension to the right hand of God the Father. Far too often overlooked or passed over in Christian teaching and preaching, the ascension of Jesus is foundational to our hope as people of faith. As human beings longing for redemption. As people distressed by the realities of sin and evil in the world. And who constantly find ourselves therefore asking, How long, O Lord, is now the time? And if not now, when? You see, the thing about Jesus' ascension is that in Jesus moving bodily from our realm into God's, into heaven, suddenly and definitively, one of our own, a brother of ours according to the flesh, Christ Jesus our Lord, with Jesus entering the realm of God as one of us, we now have a fully realized human being, the first fruits of redeemed humanity, As Paul describes the risen and ascended Lord, we now have a fully realized human being preparing things for the coming kingdom of God, all the while interceding for us amid our present suffering and tumult. With the ascension of Jesus Christ, the glorified Jesus is now in control of all things on this earth even when it doesn't appear to be so. 
And so here then is the reality that we confess as Christians. The victory over evil and darkness has already been won. The resurrection is the clear sign of that. But this victory has not yet been fully realized as evidenced by the untold amount of hardship and suffering that continues apace. God's kingdom shall come and God's will shall be done on earth as it is in heaven. This we know, but meanwhile, as Paul says, we groan. And so in our groaning, enter then the significance of the ascension. While we groan, while we wait, while we struggle, while we suffer, while we question, we have one interceding for us in our circumstances who knows what human suffering and struggle is. No better even than that. We have one interceding for us who not only knows what human suffering is like, But we have one interceding for us who is himself human. Oh, that is a magnificent thing to contemplate. That there in the presence of God, the creator of all things, dwells one of us, one of our kind, one real live human being who has been redeemed and delivered from the vicious assaults of sin and evil and even death itself. And that there from that heavenly domain, our Savior, our brother, our Redeemer, our friend, Jesus Christ, fully divine, yes, but also still and forevermore fully human too, hears our cries of anguish and feels our pain and our suffering and our grief and intercedes for us comforting us and enlivening us in ways we know not how, supplying in us anticipatory bursts of His own Spirit, the very same Spirit that will be ours in full come the realized kingdom of God. Oh, dear family, if we really believe all of that, then we can hardly wait And so then, in our groaning, we, like those first disciples, hardly able to wait, also ask, is now the time, O Lord? Surely now has to finally be the time. To which Jesus responds to us just like he did to them. It is not for you to know the times, but you will receive power when the Spirit comes upon you. The Apostle Paul understood this. The Apostle Paul understood that Christ's Spirit was the key to life in the interim, in this period between the already and the not yet. Just as the Apostle Paul understood that Christ's Spirit was not some sort of white magic or some special elixir or some mysterious panacea that we can invoke that will somehow make all things simple and smooth in this broken world or fix everything through its mere invocation. Instead, the Apostle Paul understood that Christ's Spirit is an enlivening force that can be and is shared by Christ across the eternal chasm that separates the not yet from the already is. A Spirit that works in and through our own present brokenness as His body on earth. Which is why Paul goes on to explain understanding this responsibility placed on our own human shoulders. That when we know not how to pray, or know not what to do, that this very same Spirit of Christ will intercede for us in groans too deep to utter. And 
Well, on this Ascension Sunday, I believe now is such a time. Yes, victory has already been won. Yes, God's kingdom shall indeed come and God's will shall indeed be done on earth as it is in heaven. Yes, one day for sure. But boy, do we still groan today. Ten killed in that shooting in Buffalo a week before last. Twenty-one killed this Tuesday in Texas. Nineteen of those children. Children. Is now the time, O Lord? As your pastor, I know not how to pray in a time such as this. How to pray for an evil such as this. In the face of suffering as great as this. I know not how to rightly approach God for answers to such brokenness in the world and in humanity, let alone know what to say or exhort us to do in the name of mending and healing such multi-layered evil. But I do know this, that at the right hand of God the Father is seated one of our own, One who knows what it is to suffer and grieve and hurt. One who intercedes for us through the power of His redeemed Spirit when we ourselves know not how or precisely what to pray. And so knowing that, but not knowing what else to say or pray, these words I speak now on our collective behalf. Trusting that the Spirit of the resurrected Christ will indeed hear these following words. And will indeed intercede. And will indeed comfort and provoke and compel in the ways that we all need. These following words. Roberta Drury. Margus Morrison. Andre McNeil, Aaron Salter, Geraldine Talley, Celestine Cheney, Hayward Patterson, Catherine Massey, Pearl Young, Ruth Whitfield, Alexandra Rubio, Alethea Ramirez, Amari Garza, Annabelle Rodriguez, Eliana Torres. Eliana Garcia, Eva Morales, Irma Garcia, Jackie Sazeres, Jayla Siguero, Jace Luvenos, Jose Flores, Layla Salazar, McKenna Elrod, Mayate Rodriguez, Miranda Mathis, Navia Bravo, Rogelio Torres, Tess Mata, Uzziah Garcia, Xavier Lopez.
high and lifted up, O Lord, exalted at the right hand of God, victorious in your resurrection, and even now preparing for your return with the kingdom. Intercede on our behalf, we pray. In the absence of sufficient words, O God, these precious names we lift before you, asking you to move and comfort and heal in ways we know not how to ask, begging you to give us wisdom and discernment concerning how we might practically respond to such present and multi-layered darkness. For we know that you have no body on this earth but ours, O Lord, and that therefore we are the agents through whom your Spirit works in this interim to flood the darkness with light. Your victory, O Lord, has already been won. But this earth has not yet been fully filled with your glory, not by a long sight. And so ascended on high as you are, we await your intercession and your commission, knowing that it is not for us to know the times of all things, but knowing that now is always the time to advance the cause of heaven on this already but not yet fully redeemed earth. And all God's people said, Amen. And I will now be down front to receive any who this day might want to follow Jesus Christ as Lord, working on Christ's behalf through the power of Christ's Spirit to be agents of light in a dark world, and to receive any who this day might want to become members with us here at Boulevard Baptist Church. Christ has no body now but yours, no hands but yours is on this earth. Yours is the work to serve with the joy of compassion.
Quick follow-up word uh, from celebration from last week. As you will all recall, Jan Yost presented herself for members.